Peace and blessings to the 12 tribes of Israel. Today I'm going to deal with a topic called Gentiles and Israelites. Gentiles and Israelites. So this is a topic that causes a lot of confusion. So when people so when people open the Bible, they see Gentiles and then they see it in the New Testament and they automatically assume it means all the other nations that are not Israel, right? But really, it, it depends on how it's used. But a lot of the times it's used in the New Testament to mean the Northern Kingdom Israelites, right? So it's not always the heathen nations. Sometimes it's used, a lot of the times, to be honest, to mean the Northern Kingdom Israelites because there was a split in Israel. So you had, after Solomon sinned, there was a split in Israel um, that was carried forth for Jeroboam and Rehoboam, right? So that those were the two kings. So you have one from the southern kingdom and one for the northern kingdom because there was a split. So Israel became separate nations. So therefore, they always saw each other as being separate nations. So when Paul, who was of the tribe of Benjamin, kept saying Gentiles, or sometimes he might even say strangers, Right. What he really means, yes, he means a separate nation to him, a Jew. But really what he means is an, is is the rest of the Israelites, the northern kingdom Israelites. Right. So let me go through a few scriptures and hopefully that would add to clarifying this, because I know this is something that a lot of people stumble on. I mean, it's something that a lot of people get confused on and. Obviously, the Christian church kind of runs away with it. You know, they, they, they tell you that Gentiles means all nations. It means Christ came for all nations. <laughs> that's not what you, and that's not really what the Bible is talking about. Right. That's not really what the Bible is talking about. It doesn't necessarily translate that Christ came for all nations of Israelites. Right. So you just have to be very, very careful. The Bible says that we should study to make ourselves approved. A good workman need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Right now, what we're going to do to start this off, what we're going to do um, is we will first go to Matthew 15. We're going to go to Matthew 15. Um, I actually didn't write this one down, but we're going to go to Matthew 15. And we are going to hear what Christ said out of his own mouth. Right. So we're going to Matthew 15, 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Right. So Christ said out of his own mouth, he said, I have not sent, but for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So Christ was really sent for the nation of Israel. Right. He was sent for the nation of Israel. Right. And his mission was to put Israel back together again. So there was a split via Solomon that came when he died um, via his sons, right? And Christ's job was to put Israel back together again, right? Spiritually and physically, right? So Christ said, but he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So when he's saying that, he's not saying, I have not, I'm not sent, but for everybody that believes in me, meaning all nations can be saved that believe in me. No, he means a specific bunch of people. How do we know that? Because in that same scripture, he's actually telling the woman that he was speaking to that I didn't come for you. <laughs> right? I tell you what, let's deal with that scripture and then we'll we'll go on to the other scriptures that I had planned. Right. So what we what I'm going to do. I'm going to quickly go to uh, I'm, I'm quickly go up a bit, a few verses up and I'm going to read Matthew 15. And I'm going to read from 21 to 28. So we're going to do that story. And Jesus went thus and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan, Canaan, sorry, came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a de with a devil. Right now, this woman was a Greek woman. OK, so she was an Edomite. But he answered her not a word. 
and his disciples came and besought him, saying, send her away, for she cried after us. Right. So she keeps hanging around Israel and, you know, that will be Christ and his disciples. It keeps hanging around us. Send her away. But he answered and said, I'm not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So he answered and he said, I am not sent. He answered this lady and said, I'm not sent, but only to Israel, love. All right. 25. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. So she worshipped him. Right. So she accepted it. So she accepted it. She didn't reject it. She accepted it. But he answered and said, it is not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it to the dogs. Now, the children's bread goes into the children of Israel. Right. I'm not going to precept it because I think I've done another video with it in it where I've precepted the whole story. Right. So it just means children of Israel. Right. And when he talks about bread, he means the food of the word of God, right? What, whatever he has to offer from the word of God, the fountain of water and cast it to the dogs. Dogs goes into evil doers. So that goes into the heathen nations, right? So, so what he's saying is he only came for the children of Israel. He didn't come for nobody else, right? He didn't come for the heathens. 25, and he said, truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat the crumbs which fall it from the master's table. So she's now, because she worshipped him, she accepted it. She accepted that truth and she accepted it. She said, and she said, truth, that is true. Lord, yet the dog. So she accepted that she was a dog, meaning she was in a lower level to Israel. Eat of the crumbs, the crumbs being the children of Israel will, will eat the real food and the crumbs is anything that drops from the table which fall from their master's table. So Israel being the master, right? 28. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee, even as thou will it. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Now, what Christ did was, has com what he did was had compassion on this heathen woman, right? He had compassion on her because she worshipped him and because she accepted what he said, right, that he only came for Israel and he had mercy upon her and he healed her child. Right now, what we want to take from that story is Christ is reemphasizing that he only came for Israel. That is his mission. That is what the father has sent him to do. And that is exactly what he was doing. Right. Anything else given to any heathens was crumbs. <laughs> right that's what you get from that story right okay so let's now go to Zechariah 12 and we're going to read 7 so the, the bible share is about gentiles and israelites right so we're going to try and clarify it somewhat when the bible says gentiles a lot of the times in the new testament it just means northern kingdom right and where it says jews it just means southern kingdom right so we're reading Zechariah 12 and we're reading 7 the Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do magnify themselves against Judah right so let's read so let's read 7 again the Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first so so this message so so Christ was sent to the house of Judah first because when Christ was walking around, he went straight to the Jews, right? He went, he went straight to the Jews. And his ministry really was to speak to the Jews. Jews first, and then the Gentiles, or the northern kingdom, right? So let's read it again. The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first. So that's the Jews. Jews, Jews is a short form of Judah, means house of Judah, which is three tribes, which is Levi, Benjamin, and Judah, right? That the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. So, so it is the rest of the tribes do not magnify themselves against Judah. So that will be the northern kingdom not magnifying themselves against Judah. Right. OK, so let's now go to John 11. We're going to go to John 11 and we're going to read 45 to 54. So. Christ is walking around and he's 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 delivering 
uh, the gospel and he's, you know, he's, he's speaking to his people and a lot of our people resisted what he had to say. Right. And a lot of them tried to kill him. Right. So that's the reality of, w- of what happened to Christ. Obviously, they killed him in the end. Right. <laughs> As with lots of the prophets, they kill them. Right. So we're reading from 45. Then many of the Jews which came to, to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did believed on him. But some of them went their way to the Pharisees and told them what things Jesus had done. So the Pharisees were like the enemies uh, within Israel. Right. Then gathered the chief priests and Pharisees a council and said, what do we for this man do it many miracles? So so they all got together, all the bigwigs and the Pharisees. The Pharisees were a bunch of uh, blind guides. So they were a bunch of, uh, well, they were a bunch of lowlifes, basically. They were a bunch of um, uh, bullies, right? so to speak, right? So they got together with the chief priests and the Pharisees and and the Pharisees a council and said, what do we for this man do it many? What do we do? Because this man do many miracles. And if we let him this alone, all men will believe on him and the Romans and the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. So they're saying, well, this man does a whole load of miracles. He claims that he's a son of man, the only begotten of, of, of the most high. Uh, but the, we're still in captivity with the Romans. They, they, that's going to take our power away if we start believing in him and forsaking the law of Moses. So that's what they're getting at. Right. And one of them called Cephas, being the high priest that that same year, said unto them, ye know nothing at all, nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people and that the whole nation perish not. Right. So he's getting at this one man that was prophesied in the Bible right to come and this spake he not of himself but being high priest that year right so he, he wasn't talking about himself so Cyphus wasn't talking about himself he prophesied that Jesus should die for that for that nation so he prophesied that Christ will come and die for the nation I mean this was been going on for a very long time I mean this was prophesied way back in Isaiah's time and and pretty much all the prophets uh, kind of prophesied this most of the prophets and not for that nation only, but that also he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. So not just for the Jews. I think that's what they're getting at. Not just for the Jews, but also for the Israelites that are scattered abroad. So let's read 52 again. And not that that nation only, because remember, Israel became two separate nations. Right. But that also he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. Then from that day, forth they took counsel together for to put him to death. Jesus therefore walked no more openly among the Jews. So he was basically walking amongst the Jews. Because remember what I said before, Christ, it says the tents of Judah first. So when Christ came walking around, he was he mainly uh, talked to the Jews. Jesus therefore walked no more openly among the Jews, but went thus, thus unto a country near to the wilderness into a city called Ephraim and there continued with his disciples. So so he left the Jews because they were giving him a hard time and then he went to speak to Ephraim, right? <laughs> right? So that is basically the theme that you're going to see carried through by Paul, right? So we're reading from John 4, 19 and we will end this at 26. So we're reading John 4, 19 and we'll end it at 26. OK, so John 4, 19 and we end it at 26. Here, ready, go. The woman said unto him. So this is a woman that he met at a well. Right. So this is Christ meeting a woman at a well. The woman said unto him, sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in his mountain and ye saw and you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Right. So she was a Samarian, right? So she was a Marath- Samaritan woman. I should have read it from the beginning, actually. Um, yeah, but it's a, it's it's a longish story. So I, so basically, um, she was a Samaritan woman, right? So she was from Samaria, 
Right? So let's read 19 again. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worship in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. So when she, she talks about fathers, she's talking about of the northern kingdom. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Right? So he's going on to talking about Israel being kicked out of Israel. So th there'll be no more Israel, uh, Israelites in the land of Israel. So he said, Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. So he's preempting the Romans kicking out um, the Israelites. 22. Ye worship, ye know not what we know, what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. So what he was getting at to this Samarathan woman, which she was a northern kingdom, is that salvation is of the Jews first. Right. So that's what he's getting at. Right. So you worship, you know, not we know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. What he really means is Jews first. Right. But the hour coming and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the father in spirit and in truth. But the father seeketh such to worship him. So he's saying this is all going to be spread out to the 12 tribes. Right. And it, it, he's going to be seeking those to worship him, those of it, those Israelites to worship him. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman said unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. So he's he's proclaiming to her this man that was prophesied to come that our forefathers prophesied to come, I am he, I am Christ. So she, so he was verifying to her that he was Christ. Now, now the story is a quite an interesting story because there's quite a lot of things going on there. But what Christ was saying was, was Jews first and then everybody else, right? <laughs> so he was basically echoing uh, where we went to be, where we went to before, which is Zechariah 12, 7. The Lord shall raise the tents of Judah first, Right. So let's now go to Acts 13. So we're dealing with Gentiles and Israelites and we're going to get to the bottom of it to hopefully add more edification uh, in this Bible share. Right. So we're reading Acts 13 and we're going to read from 42 to 48. And when the Jews were gone, gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought, besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Now, when this congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas. Barnabas was uh, like he was a second preacher that, that, that followed Paul, who speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. Right. So let's read. 40, let's read from 42 again. And when the Jews were, were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. So, so it talks about Gentiles. So let's carry on. Now, when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and the religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. And the next Sabbath day came almost a whole city together to hear the word of God. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and spoke against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. Right. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you. So, again, it's echoing Zechariah 12, 7. Right. He's saying He's saying to the Jews that the word should be spoken first to you. <clears throat> but seeing you put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of, unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. So he's saying to the Jews that were misbehaving, he's saying, well, because you judge, because you not behaving right, we are now going to pass it on to the Gentiles, the Gentiles meaning the northern kingdom of Israel. That's why there's a diff. That's why it says Jews and Gentiles. It doesn't say Israelites and Gentiles. It says Jews because the Jews were the southern kingdom and the Gentiles, which were separate nation, although they're really the same nation. Right. But the Jews address them as being Gentiles. Right. For so hard the Lord commanded us saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. Right. So the commandment was that you go into all nations. 
right? You go into all nations and you preach the gospel. But obviously the Jews first and then the Gentiles. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. And the word of the Lord was published throughout all the region. But the Jews stared up the devout and honourable women and the chief men of the city and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of their coast. So the Jews were a bit aggravated that he was speaking to the Gentiles, which was the northern kingdom. But they shook off the dust of their feet against them and came into Iconium and the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. All right. So that gives you an example of the dis- there was a difference between the Jews and the Gentiles. Right. So the Jews understood that. Well, some of them, they did, understood that Paul, everything was to come to them first. Right. And the, the Gentiles afterwards. You know, maybe some of them probably thought it's just about them and not so much the Gentiles, because, as I said before, there was a split. So both uh, the, the, the northern and southern kingdom acted like separate nations. Right. So let's now go to John seven and we're going to read from 28 to 35. So we're reading John 7 and we're reading from 28 to 35. Then cried Jesus in the temple as he taught, saying, Ye both know me, and ye know whence I am, and I am not come of myself, but he that sent me is true, whom ye know not. But I know him, for I am from him, and he hath sent me. Then they sought to take him, but no man laid hands on him, because his hour was not yet come. And many of the people believed on him and said, When Christ cometh, will he do more miracles than these, which... This man had done. The Pharisees heard that the people murmured such things concerning him and the Pharisees and the chief priests sent officers to take him. Then said Jesus unto them, yet a little while I am with you and then I go unto him that sent me. Right. So Christ is saying I'm here for a little while and then I'm going back to my father. Ye shall seek me and shall not find me, and where I am, thither you cannot come. Then said the Jews among themselves, Whither will he go? Where's he going to go? That he should not find him. Where's he going to go that we can't find him? Will he go unto the disperse among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? So, <laughs> so this bit stumbles, makes a lot of people stumble. So it says, will he go on to disperse, the disperse meaning the northern kingdom Israelites that were called Gentiles, among the Gentiles, among the real Gentiles, and teach the Gentiles, and teach the Gentile Israelites. Right? So let's read it again. Then said the Jews among themselves, whither will he go that we sh- shall not find him? Whether he go on to disperse, meaning the northern kingdom Israelites, among the Gentiles, among the real Gentiles, And teach the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles that are the dispersed. The dispersed means the northern kingdom Israelites, right? Okay, so let's now go to Romans 11. And we're going to read, we're going to read Romans 11. And this is going to, this is the main chapter that confuses quite a lot of people. Um, So I'm going to kind of take it slow and in snippets. And I'm not going to read... I'm not going to precept everything to death, right? I'm just going to precept just a few things here and there, but generally give you the drift of it so that you get what it's trying, what it's, what it's saying, basically. Right. Okay. Okay. So let's go to Romans 11 and we're going to read from 11 to 27. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. So again, it's it's about all the other scriptures that I've just mentioned and explained. It's talking about to provoking who to jealousy? To provoke the Jews to jealousy, right? Against the northern kingdom, right? So it's saying, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation is come unto the northern kingdom Israelites for to provoke them to jealousy. To pro- provoke who? To provoke the Jews to jealousy. 12. Now, if the four of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them, the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? <clears throat> for I say to your gen- so say to you Gentiles, insomuch as I am an apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine, mine house. Right. So when he says magnifying mine house, he's talking about he's a Jew because Paul was a Benjamite. 
right? So let's let's go back to Zechariah 12. Right, so we're back reading Zechariah 12, 7. The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first. So that's the, that's the Jews. And the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah, right? So it's the rest of the Israelites do not magn himself, magnify themselves against Judah. So let's go back to that to, tw to Romans eleven thirteen, For I speak to you Gentiles in so much as I am an apostle of the Gentiles. So he is an apostle of the northern kingdom Israelites. I magnify mine house, mine office rather. So the magnify mine office means Judah. Because Paul was a Benjamite. He was a Jew. And if by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh. My flesh means the Jews because he was a Jew. And might save some of them. So he's even talking about saving some of his own people, like the Pharisees and the scribes, because they were blind guides. Right. They were, like I said before, they were like bullies. They were the enemies within Israel. Fifteen, for if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world. Right. So the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world. What world? The world of Israel. Let's go to. Didn't plan this one again, <laughs> but let's go to Isaiah 45, I believe it's 17. Let's go there. So what world is it talking about? But Israel shall be saved in, in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. You shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. So that's a world of Israelites, right? So it says, but Israel, meaning the whole nation of Israel, shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation, ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded, world without end. So what, what world is it talking about? The world of the Israelites, right? So let's read it. Let's read that bit again. For if casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, mean reconciling of 12 tribes, what should be receiving of them be but life from the dead, right? So he's talking about the receiving of the northern kingdom or the Gentiles that would have been grafted in, right? For if the first fruit be holy, so the first fruit talks about Christ. The lump is also holy. The lump goes into the body. And if the root be holy, it goes back. He's talking about Christ again. So are the branches. He's going, he's talking about the 12 tribes of Israel, right? So let's precept those. So we are going to go to 1 Corinthians. We're going to precept them one after the next, right? So we're going to go to 1 Corinthians 15, 20. But now is Christ now, but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. Right. So Christ was the first fruits, right? So that's the first fruit of that that scripture is talking about. So let's now do the lump. So 1 Corinthians 5, reading from 6 to 7. Your glorifying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. So it's talking about the body of Christ, right? So it's talking about the body of Christ, right? So let's now do the root. Revelation, Revelations 22, 16. I, Jesus, have sent mine Angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. So Christ is saying that he's the root and of the lineage of David. So let's do the last one. Branch. Let's go to Jeremiah 23 and we're going to read from five to six. Behold, the days come, said the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch and a king shall reign and and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. So it's talking about Christ. And in those days, Judah shall be saved. So that's, that's the Jews. And Israel shall dwell, shall dwell safely. So it's talking about Judah and the northern kingdom, right? The northern kingdom sometimes was called Israel, the house of Israel. And this is his name, whereby he shall be called the Lord, our righteousness. So the branch goes into the 12 tribes. Right. It goes into Israelites. Right. So let's read 16 again. But if the first fruit, first fruits be whole, which is Christ, the lump is also whole, meaning the rest of the body. And if the root, which is Christ, be holy, so are the branches. So the branches are the, the 12 tribes of Israel. So let's continue this now. 17. And if some of the branches be broken off and thou be in a while of a olive tree. So it's going into the northern kingdom Israelites because the Jews were raised up uh, in the law. They were raised up in the law. And obviously Christ went primarily to the Jews first. Right. 
And if some of the branches be broken off, meaning in the northern kingdom Israelites, and there be a wild olive tree means that you you're badly or bad olive tree. Whilst grafted in among them and with them partakers of the root and the fatness of the olive tree. So the root goes into Christ, of course. So you you so it's so it's saying was grafted in among them. So grafted in, meaning the northern kingdom grafted in. And with them partakers of the root, the root being Christ and fatness of the olive tree, meaning uh, the fatness, meaning the Holy Spirit, right? The Holy Spirit. 18. Boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Right. So again, it's going into Christ. 19. Thou thou will say then the branches were broken off that I might might be grafted in. So those branches were broken off so that they might so that they might be grafted. You might say, right, that the branches were broken off that I that I might be grafted in. <clears throat> right. Uh, so it's going into Christ. Right. 20. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off and thou standest by faith. Right. So the, the northern kingdom Israelites broken off. I mean, some Jews, too, to be honest, too, were broken off, too. Uh, so where are we? 20. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off and thou standest by faith. Be not high minded, but fair. For if God spare it not. The natural branches. So the natural branches would be the ones, the Jews, the ones that, that were raised up in the laws. Right. They were raised up in the laws and Christ and all the prophets spoke to them first. So they are the. So if God spared not the natural branches, take heed least he also spare not thee. Right. So we said if he didn't spare those uh, Jews that if he didn't spare the Jews, <laughs> right? It, so, so Christ is associating them with the Jews that were broken off too, really. So if God spared not the natural branches, take heed least he also spare not thee. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fell. Severity, but towards thee, goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shall be cut off. Right. So it's so you've been grafted in. So, so Paul is is talking about the, the Gentiles being a northern kingdom being grafted back in. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in if God is able to graft them in again. So if you believe you'll be grafted in and if you unbelief if you're in in unbelief and your works shows that you're not a believer then obviously you're not grafted in right so let's read 23 again and they say also if they abide not still in unbelief shall be grafted in for god is able to graft them in again 24 for if thou was cut off the olive tree which is wild by nature and which grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? So Paul is saying, if the Lord is going to graft in um, the northern kingdom Israelites, the Gentiles, graft them in, meaning the wild olive tree. How much more is he not going to graft in, you know, the natural branches, meaning the Jews, the Jews that fell off, the Pharisees and those that fell, fell into unbelief that were of the house of Judah? For I would not, brethren, that ye shall be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness is in part is happened to Israel unto the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. So the blindness happened to the Pharisees and the scribes. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, there shall come out of Zion the, the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Right. So all Israel goes into all the tribes of Israel. Doesn't mean that every single Israelite will be saved. It just means all the 12 tribes, the remnant, the remnant or remnant of all the tribes of Israel, 12 tribes. There shall come out of Zion, the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. So that's Christ. But this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sins. Right. Right. So I'm not going to go further than there. Right. But. Let's precept a green olive tree to a wild olive tree. So we're going to precept Jeremiah 11 and we're going to go from 16 to 17. The Lord called thy name a green olive tree fair and a goodly fruit. 
with noise of a great tumult, he had kindled fire upon it and the branches of it are broken, right? So green olive tree is a goodly olive tree, right? 17, for, for the Lord of hosts that planted thee heart pronounced evil against thee for the evil of the house of Israel and of the house of Judah, which they have done against themselves to provoke me to anger in offering incense unto Baal, right? So that goes into a wild olive tree. So a goodly olive tree is one that's in order, and the branches are not broken off, right? But a badly or a bad olive tree is the one that the branches are broken off. So the good one is a green, healthy olive, olive tree. And the one that is not a good olive tree is the ones with the branches broken off. So the Lord called thy name a good olive tree, fair and of goodly fruit. With the noise of a great tumult, he heart kindled fire upon it and the branches of it are broken. Right. So they got broken. That goodly olive tree got broken. But the Lord of hosts had planted thee, heart pronounced evil against thee for the evil of the house of Israel and the house of Judah, which they have done against themselves to provoke me to anger in offering incense unto Baal. So they got the branches got broken off because of idolatry, right? So that's that's what that is going into. So let's do one last scripture. Uh, we're going to go to Ezekiel 37 and we're going to read from 15 to 19. So we're reading Ezekiel 37 and we're going to read from 15 to 19. So this is the plan, right? The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it for Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions. So that's the northern and the southern kingdom. Then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim and for all the house of Israel, his companions. So it's talking about all the tribes, right, of those two houses. And join them one to another into one stick and they shall become one in thine hand. So back together again as one body. 18. And when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee, saying, Wilst thou not show us what thou meanest of these? Say unto them, Thus said the Lord God, Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel, his fellows, and will put them with him, even with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, and they shall be one in mine hand. So basically, it's about putting Israel back together again. So when the Bible talks about a lot of the times when it talks about Gentiles, especially if Paul is, is, is saying it, what he really means is the Gentiles of the northern kingdom. Right. And when it talks about Jews and Gentiles, it normally talks about the southern kingdom being the house of Judah and the northern kingdom being the ten tribes or the house of Ephraim. Brothers and sisters, I hope you were edified. Shalom.